It's Freedom Files with James Burns. Welcome to the Freedom Files podcast for this Thursday, January 26, 2012. I am James Burns. We are joined now by Bob Chapman, his website, theinternationalforecaster.com. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Oh, pretty good. Another good day today in the best of all places, gold and silver. And uh, that makes people happy who are long. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy about and, it. And, uh, you know, there's, uh, I don't think people understand the import of this um, zero interest rate extension. We're looking at 2012, 13, and 14 at least three years, uh, they're going to have to very simply continue to doing what they're doing, really, in practicality, indefinitely until the system collapses. And that's what I think they intend to do. Yeah, I agree entirely. A big boost to anything that um, has anything to do with inflation. I mean, not only the commodities, but gold and silver. And uh, it it's sort of neutral on the general market. I I think it was discounted already. And earnings are going to be much lower this year. So that'll be a negative to stocks. But the extra money would be a positive. I think they stay relatively the same to the year. And um, that will make uh, the president happy. I think that uh, gold and silver is looking pretty good today. You know, $1,721.70 for gold. Silver up to uh, $33.36. I know that they've been doing a lot, Bob, to try and uh, keep the numbers down on both gold and silver. But as you've mentioned time and time again, it's only a matter of time before they lose control of that bull. You're right. Um, if Ron Paul were to get elected, things things would change fast. If he doesn't get elected, they'll draw this thing out, turn America into a police state. Uh, people like me will be picked up and shot. Uh, that's the way it'll be. Uh, these people, uh, the public just doesn't get it. No, they don't. And you see this happening right now on the uh, streets of Los Angeles, this police state. They're already conducting drills out in public. You know, one of the largest cities in the country, the LAPD, Special Forces. They're conducting military drills with Black Hawk helicopters in the skies of, you know, downtown Los Angeles. And what they're doing is, as you and I both know, Bob, is they're just gearing up people to accept this as a norm. That's right. So when they drop down on the helicopter in front of your house at 3 a.m. and kick the door in, you'll expect it. Yeah, it's... I think, they, I think you know, our government's going to have their hands full in L.A. They have 250,000 gang members with weapons as good, if not better, than the military. And that's a formidable force, never mind all of the regular citizens who are armed. And boy, there's lots of them. And I know I lived there a long time. And um, I'm, uh, I can see why they picked L.A., because they're probably going to go in there and do that anyway. They want to practice before they went in. Yeah, that definitely wouldn't surprise me, Bob, if they're planning on carrying out something in L.A. and probably – most of the major cities across the U.S., east and west, I mean, that's, you know, they're going to use the main cities as a way to basically fence pe- people in. I mean, they're going to basically be big super FEMA camps. Right. But, I mean, I agree with you that Ron Paul's our only real choice right now and having any hope of turning any of this stuff around. I mean, you have the media, they're blacking out him once again. I mean, uh, they are dropping the... Uh, positive stories that they've been running and slightly increasing the negative stories regarding Ron Paul 
and tonight's the uh, CNN debate, Bob, and, you know, most of that's just song and dance. You know, once again, they're going to probably do what they can to neglect Ron Paul and give him as little time as possible. I mean, if, if it hasn't become more apparent that the mainstream media is out to, you know, keep Ron Paul from uh, the public ears and eyes, I mean, people have been, you know, living in a fantasy land if they don't see that. Yeah, you're right. And with the stealing of votes, and, hey, you three elections, uh, all of them should be thrown out. They were all rigged. Yeah, and I've seen several videos, Bob, from people in South Carolina, and they, they were talking about how they voted for Ron Paul, their family voted for Ron Paul, friends and people in, that worked with them and churchgoers voted for Ron Paul, and they just can't believe where all these new Gingrich votes came from. It's... It's very suspicious what happened down there this past weekend. Well, you're right, and they're right. and I guess um, the powers that be don't care. And uh, he's defeated. Then uh, they'll have a revolution. And if they think their special forces can stop the public, they're crazy. Absolutely crazy. I mean, L.A., I don't know how many people are there, but there's going to be 10 million people there, if you include the valley. That is the uh, San Fernando Valley. I would say there's at least a million weapons just in that every area alone. Never mind what the criminals got. Well, I do know it's difficult to actually get a weapon legally in the state of California, so I'm sure there's a lot of people that, you know, go to other states and, you know, sneak them across the border just so they can be able to protect themselves because, I mean, California is one of those states that doesn't really – recognize your right to keep and bear arms are, you know, I don't even think they have a castle law in California, but I could be wrong about that. Well, the best thing for people to do is to sell their property and get out. And don't go to Phoenix. It's just as bad. I so was in Vegas. You got to go to a city that's doing reasonably well, you know, economically. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing a lot of people seriously need to consider. If they live in a bad city or a bad state, uh, now might be a good time to consider relocating to another. If you can't make it out of the country to somewhere else, you know, at the very least you should go somewhere that's a little bit more appealing in the, the regards of freedom and liberty and individual rights. Yeah, we're going to lose uh, tremendously if he doesn't get elected. I mean, the Federal Reserve, the working group in financial markets, lobbying, campaign contributions, FEMA, TSA, and, and all of that stuff. We're going to lose our last chance. People don't know what it's like to live under submission. It's very, very bad. Yeah, it is. I have, and I know what it's like. And people just, for some reason, I mean, may, maybe the majority of the people do get it. Maybe the majority of people are rallying to Ron Paul, but at the same time, they do control the electronic voting machines. Maybe most of the people in South Carolina did vote for Ron Paul, but they're just rigging the numbers and saying, no, Newt Gingrich won. So, I mean, it's very possible that they're doing this. And if they are, and if the truth comes out, I think that they're going to be in serious trouble. Yeah, well, that's why the military is practicing. I wouldn't want to be in this spot, I'll tell you that. That's Not a tough either. place to be. No, no, it is. Because, you know, you got to make the choice. Are you going to shoot people in your own family? I don't think so. I think that whole thing is going to blow up in their face. Yeah, I, I think it's going to as well. At least I have to hope that the majority of the men and women serving our country will you know, refuse the orders when the time comes because they're not machines. They have friends. They have family. And it's just difficult to conceive the notion that they would start rounding up other people's friends and family and <laughs> hauling them off to camps or who knows where. And then they get told that their childhood friend, Joey, says something nasty about the president and they hung him in the middle of the square. This is what it's going to be like. Americans don't get it. You're right. And it's, it's not just American citizens that are in danger. I mean, look at our elected officials. I mean, most of them, of course, are bought and paid for. But the few good ones, like Senator Paul, 
you know, he had a little encounter with the TSA in Kentucky the other day. They claimed he was being irate and wasn't detained. But a couple of days later, the security camera footage came out, and it proves that not only was uh, Sec- Senator Paul very calm, uh, he was also detained in this cubicle. So, once again, another example how the TSA is lying to the American people and how they have no regard for anybody. If they're willing to do that to Senator Paul, they're willing to do that to all of us. And who knows what else they might do. You don't even want to contemplate it after what we saw our military and the CIA do at Guantanamo. Now, that's a very scary thought. You know, Gitmo USA, you know, that's probably the direction that we're heading, Bob. You're, you you hit it right on the head. Well, it says in legislation they can take them there. That's why they kept the place open. Yeah. So and, that's what they intend. And it's not just going to be Gitmo. It's going to be all these FEMA camps they've been building. It's going to be, you know, black sites, ghost sites. You know all about that, Bob. I mean, they're going to send you almost anywhere they want it in order to do whatever they wish to you and you're going to have no rights no due process and it doesn't matter if you're not really a terrorist if they suspect you of one which could be for any reason they're going to come after you that's right especially if you speak out yeah and that's another reason to support ron paul because you know last week when he went to go uh vote against the uh, latest raise of debt you know he also introduced uh, those amendments to try and strip the latest uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Of course, you know what's going to happen. Most of the Congress are going to shoot it down. They're going to not vote for it. They're going to let it die. And because, as you and I both know, Bob, they're they're all corrupt. They're they're all going to follow their orders, you know, from above. And they could care less if we start getting rounded up by the military, whether we're innocent or guilty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always like to see those people. Uh, there's no reason for them to pick me up. I didn't do anything. We're picking you up anyway just because we feel like it. And that's happened time and time again throughout countless totalitarian regimes. Nazi Germany, the Soviet Union, Communist China. The list goes on and on. I mean, uh, the other day, Bob, I came across this article regarding uh, what happened in uh, North Korea You know, when Kim Jong-il supposedly passed away. You know, they had all these people out mourning his death. And, I mean, it it doesn't take a brain surgeon to realize that most of them were probably just faking it because they didn't want to get in trouble. And what happened? A couple of them that the uh, government, the military in North Korea decided, uh, well, you weren't sincere enough. They got picked up and sent off to labor camps. Typical thinking. Typical thinking. Well, um, I've been looking into the situation in Europe. They haven't solved anything. They got more money available. Anywhere between one and ten trillion, the way I look at it. And Credit Suisse uh, agrees with me. But nobody else has discovered it yet for some reason. And they've got all this money. And they're just going to keep on throwing it at the problems until they get some more money. So we're headed uh, toward... uh, real inflation in Europe and the situation uh, um, yeah and yesterday's issue I had a pay from one of our subscribers in Greece and and the whole thing is about to blow up there's not going to be any deal there and there's an election coming in April I'm going to say no no deal so uh, that's where I think it's all headed yeah, it definitely sounds like the situation in Europe is continuing to unravel with each passing day. And, you know, it's only a matter of time before, you know, the bottom falls out there. I mean, it could be a matter of months or a matter of years. Who knows when it's going to actually happen. But no matter when the timetable is, if we haven't had a similar situation happen here in the States, it's going to most likely cause a domino effect. Uh, yes. But I, don't, I don't know how long that will take. Um, um, it could take quite a while. Um, you know, you could lose uh, Greece and Portugal and and um, and Ireland, and yeah, they're small potatoes uh, to the whole thing. 
And the question is, are they going to lose Italy and Spain? And we don't know that. Uh, will they take that trillion dollars and bail them out? Probably. But who knows? You know, I, I see these uh, statements by people, most of whom have no history in whatever area they talk about, telling us that the sky is falling and it's going to we're going to have defaults next week and things like that. They're stupid, crazy. I mean, you, you've you got to look at what you're faced with. Well, they got enough money to last a couple of years at least. And so there's not going to be any default. Um, there may be dropouts in the euro, but that's different. And uh, But it'll continue to deteriorate but not at, in such a way that it'll bring down the system now. now. That'll happen later. But it will come down. And uh, you just have to find out uh, where the Rothschilds are going to hide out. And so then you'll know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Bob Chapman is my guest. His website, theinternationalforecaster.com. And uh, speaking of the, the European Union, uh, it looks like they've joined the um, the attack against Iran. They're now, uh, what, I guess pushing uh, for sanctions as well. And isn't that kind of shooting themselves in the foot because they depend on Iranian oil, don't they, Bob? Uh, they do in part, and uh, that's the problem. Uh, the problem's bigger in Spain and Italy. Um, you know, what they've just done is guaranteed the failure of those countries. If oil prices stay where they are on $100 a barrel, and it seems that they want to keep them there, it has nothing to do with a free market. There are no free markets anymore. They're all run by criminals. I couldn't believe I was watching uh, the uh, Illuminati executives from Davos uh, this morning, and Jamie Dimon, uh, CEO of uh, JPM, says Ben Bernanke's done an absolutely phenomenal job, <laughs> and went on and on and on. And I said to myself, "Do you really expect us to believe that?" You know who reminded me of his accent and his attitude, his aggressiveness in nineteen. 19- 48, Tony Curtis made a movie, I forget what it was called, and he was that type, and he never changed, never changed. Uh, he was um, not very well liked in Beverly Hills where he lived. He also had a home in Las Vegas. I think they, there were four or five people at his services when he uh, drank himself and cocained himself to death. And this, this other guy reminds me of him. Well, I I think that if you look at it from Jamie Dimon's perspective and the uh, uh, corporate elite Illuminati, I think that, you know, he was being honest, you know, he you know with the way, you know, Bernanke's doing things is phenomenal from their perspective. Not from ours, but from theirs. True. And that was for the audience, not here, in America. And that was for the audience there to show how powerful he was. Anyway, yeah, I mean, that's... they had snow and it was cold. I've been to Davos, I don't know, 50 times uh, when I lived in Switzerland. But there are resorts I like much better. Uh, be as it may, it's, it's been a cold week. Indeed. And it's just sad that you have these groups out there that continue to, you know, plot and scheme against us and uh, they get away with it. You know, what happens in Davos with uh, the Bohemian Grove, with uh, Bilderberg, all these roundtable groups, and they continue to do what they do, criminal acts, obviously. And you don't have the mainstream media or authorities, you know, law enforcement lifting a finger to stop them and I, I long for the day, Bob, when we actually are able to go after them. 
Well, in their world, what they do is legal because they make the rules. And they'll continue to do that. That's very true. But hopefully we're waking up more people with what you're doing, with what so many others are doing, with what Ron Paul's doing with his uh, run for president. And, it I mean, I agree with you entirely. I, it's just getting more and more suspicious with each passing primary and caucus that it, it's starting to really look like the fix is in and that they're going to do everything they can to get Romney uh, the GOP nomination. Uh, it seems very apparent that that's the case because, I mean, look what's happening to Gingrich right now. He's coming under fire by the establishment of the GOP for criticizing and insulting Reagan years back. And it, 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 they, I guess they kept him in for a while just, just for their own amusement. But now that it looks like that Gingrich is becoming some sort of fake threat, they want to go ahead and, you know, put one in the back of the head and get him out of the race. I think you're right. He is what's all a stocking horse. And they learned a lot from him running. But they'll pull him out. In your opinion, Bob, do you think that if, you know, it, it continues to go the way it's going to go with Romney getting the GOP nomination, which is most likely what's going to happen, I mean, I hope not. I would like to believe we can somehow turn the tide. But if that happens, are they going to keep Obama in another four years? Or are they going to go ahead and just say, okay, we've had enough of this guy. You know, he's only gotten us as far as he's going to get us. It's time for a new puppet. I don't, I don't think it's, it's important. They're just going to tell who's in there and what to do. Yeah, I think that's the case as well. And I have another question about Romney. In your opinion, because here's a guy who was, you know, started Bank Capital back in the 80s, who's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, very wealthy, very influential. Why do you think he wants to be president? It's all about ego, or he might have been groomed to be that uh, 30 years, 50 years ago. We don't know. Man, I do know that his dad, who uh, ran for gov- who was a governor, did run for president in a failed build- bid. So maybe it's you know kind of like a, a family tradition that they started back then. And you know, if he gets elected, then unfortunately one of his sons may end up running for president as well. Maybe they're trying to start their own version of the Bush dynasty. I don't. I mean, it's just very – I mean, if I was worth that much money, Bob, I don't think I'd worry my time running for president. I mean, because once you become president, you're basically in a gilded cage. You're constantly surrounded by security. Everywhere you go, you're, you're tracked and kept an eye on. I, I, that just doesn't sound very much – very fun to me. No, it's not. And uh, – but, you know, uh, it fits the ego, you know. You got to understand people, and I know Reagan pretty well, and he, uh, I don't know, it was a job, I guess, for him. That's the way I look at it. Uh, and they've never, they've never delved, in, delved into the senior side of his life either. Yeah, they all seem to have that, unfortunately. And I, I, the way I see Reagan now is the same way I see Obama. They're actors, and this is just their 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 big gig, their big break, the the starring role they've been preparing for all their lives. It's a good way to put it. Now, and speaking of Obama, I don't know if you heard about this, but apparently uh, he uh, ignored the judge order in uh, Georgia to appear at Atlanta court. Uh, the case is centering around whether or not Obama is qualified to be a natural-born citizen. And the result could very well mean that Obama is not going to be on the Georgia ballot in November. So you have Obama's lawyers telling uh, the, the state of Georgia, look, you know, this is silly. This is costly. This is ridiculous. You need to, to drop this. And you have the state of Georgia saying, no, this is, you know, a legitimate issue that's been brought up. And, you know, you better have uh, a lawyer here or you better attend or there, you know, there could be consequences. And, you know, the hearing's going on, I think, right now, Bob. And, I mean, that, that's a very promising sign, but I think that in the end, I think there's going to be some sort of typical backdoor shenanigans, which will probably end up throwing this whole thing out. Probably. They get away with everything. And it's been going on for a long time. It's just that they don't care that you know anymore. They just do it right in your face and say, so what? I'm a criminal. I like it. I know. I mean, it's... They just keep making it worse and worse. And I, I think that they anticipated that sooner or later we were going to find out, or, or maybe not. Maybe it's the, the Internet and it's 
what you and others have been doing for decades now, exposing them and waking up people to their shenanigans. And I think they finally got you know, past that point in no return where they realized they have no choice but to keep going because they've already gone too far. I don't think they think that they've gone too far because <laughs> they've got a long way to go with this thing. But they do know they're under a lot of pressure, and they're not winning every battle, that's for sure. I, I, I think they get problems. They, they think they can overcome them. I mean, the final analysis, they'll just bring out the army and tell them to shoot everybody. They think that'll work. I, I don't think so, and neither do you, but they do. And what you do is you turn the army around and have them shoot them. <laughs> I support that one. <laughs> Well, Absolutely. I mean, I mean that's the natural reaction. I mean, these these people are so bad. It's hard for the average person to understand what they're up to. You know, people get elected uh, for the government all their life, like Alex B. J. and his uh, his uh, uh, his estate was uh, like $480 million or something. Um, how do you do that? It's a pretty good question, isn't it? Yeah. It's one that has me puzzled. I mean, I'm just amazed at, you know, all these, you know, special treatments that they get and special deals and, you know, how it's obvious that, you know, there's a double standard in the world when it comes to uh, them versus us. And it, there's a lot of people right now speculating that these protests going on throughout the world, there, there's uh, more rallies taking place right now in uh, Egypt. That hasn't gone away. And it, it looks like that there's going to be um, more of the uh, what we've seen happen over the past year here in the States. Well, since October with the Occupy movement, a lot of people are projecting that it's very possible that these protests, which have been for the most part peaceful, whether you agree or disagree with their points of view on the issues, it looks like that it could very well become violent. What is your take on that, Bob? Well, the potential is always there. And you never know what's going to kick off violence. It just Usually it's spontaneous. And uh, someone's saying, I, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore. And, uh, it's, it's the least assuming person sometimes. You know, some farmer grabs onto his uh, Barrett and starts uh, taking out uh, people who are guarding his farm from two miles away. Uh, something to think about. Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's going to come to some sort of breaking point where you have all this abuse of power going on, not only in our country but throughout the world. And, you know, the authorities get away with everything. You know, they, you know, go after the citizens like we're, you know, a bunch of low-level petty slaves. They, I mean, I've seen so many, you know, more police state stories in the past week than in a while now. I mean, I, one of like a 70-something-year-old man uh, got the crap beat out of him by police. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is a 76-year-old, or I think, yeah, I think he was 76, actually. This is a, you know, old senior citizen who probably wasn't doing anything worth being pummeled to death but i think the police did it anyways and eventually they're going to do this to the wrong person or to the father or grandfather of the wrong person and that's when there's going to be some massive retaliation yeah and i'm i'm deeply concerned about the quality uh, not only they are going to wipe out the people in law enforcement because many of these people are very well armed they got to go after their families and shoot them too I mean, why not? They shot my family. They shot my grampy. I mean, what, pray tell, could he do at 76 to cause them any problems? No, that's the way we got to handle it. And that's what's going to evolve. And I've told our enforcement over and over again, pick your side. You pick the wrong side, you're going to lose it all. Yeah, and, I mean, there's a prime example to what you're talking about. I mean, look at the, the tyranny that was carried about by what Louis the Sixteenth in uh, France, whenever the people finally rose up against him, they didn't just go after him; they went after his wife and his mistress, and they both lost their heads. That's correct, and uh, three hundred thousand people lost there. It's a lot of heads. Yeah, it is, and it's 
It's my fear, and you've talked about this. And you times. and you live for 20 to 25 seconds after your head is severed from your body. Yeah. So I, your I, head can be lying there watching them drag your corpse away. It's a horrible thing. And us tests were just made uh, in France by a doctor uh, in a recent execution, maybe a year ago. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the uh, last thing I don't want to have, <laughs> seeing my body being dragged away <laughs> after I get my head lobbed off. That'd be the last thing I want to have happen to me in the last moments of my life. But uh, it's, just, it's just sad because you've, you've said this time and time again, your fear that it's very possible that we're heading towards a French-style revolution, and that could very well lead to something even worse, you know, our own Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, I think we'll get him anyway. And uh, it could be the current non-citizen, and uh, it could be somebody else. Look, you know, when this thing starts, people get the opportunity. they got a clean house. I mean, all of these uh, politicians, ex-politicians, judges, uh, who have, you know, worked with the Illuminists, they're all going to go if they lose. Yeah, I mean, if if things go that direction, I I think that it's safe to say that they're, I mean, all bets are going to be off in that regard. Bob Chapman is my guest. His website is theinternationalforecaster.com. And some of the things that could very well lead to what may end up happening in this country, you know, you know the growing civil unrest and perhaps even uh, violence if we don't have a peaceful revolution with uh, Congressman Ron Paul. And that's the only way I can see us possibly turning things around without any blood spilled is you see the, the, the rise in food, gas prices. You also have uh, what happened, what, over 2011? Uh, new home sales were the worst in history. And unemployment continues to rise, despite what Obama said in his, uh, you know, state of the dictatorship address uh, Tuesday night. So there's definitely a lot of things going on right now, Bob, that could very well lead us to that breaking point. You're right. And uh, they are there. Uh, you know, I always say, and have uh, for the last six or seven years, why would anybody who is a professional house builder, build houses, 6.8 million in inventory, and they expect it to be 9.8 in two more years, beginning of 14. And I just don't get it. I know there are people who only want to buy a new home, and that's okay. But for lots of people to do that, I don't think so. I mean, not when you can buy the same house for $100,000, that you're paying 300 for. That's pretty dumb. Well, I, I happen to have a little bit of experience in house flipping, Bob. And I'll say this. In my opinion, you're way better off buying a house that was built in the 1950s than one that was built recently or 10, 20 years ago. The, the material is way better. Uh, the people that uh, built the homes back then, I think they did a lot better job. I live in a home that was built in the 1950s. You know, perfect, great brick house. And I've heard plenty of horror stories about homes that were built, you know, 30, 40, 50 years later that are already falling apart. That's probably true. And the quality of homes, you're right, in the last 30 years have not been up to previous standards. Uh, everybody wanted to get a little bit extra. And uh, now we have housing that's falling apart. Yeah, and it goes back to this whole programming, you know. I have to have what's new. New, 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 new. If it's new, I'm going to go buy it. It doesn't matter if I already have a decent TV. Hey, there's a brand new one. I'm going to go buy it. You know, hey, a brand new car came out. Oh, well, my car still runs fine, and I don't owe anything on it. But I want to go buy a new car anyways and get myself further in debt. It's just the, another prime example, Bob, of uh, programming. You're absolutely right. Um. America, American consumerism uh, built upon a pile of debt has come to an end. And the way we used to live and the motivations are going to change completely. 
you got to be looking for a very solid house for what you're paying for. And um, there's going to be lots of homes that you wouldn't buy because they were built recently, not as well, not as good the materials in them and so on. And so, um, but I don't see many people buying houses. I mean, who can afford them? I mean, at 3.5%, 30-year fix, which it's not there yet, but that's what they're heading for. And uh, a couple of thousand dollars down, um, that doesn't solve the problem. You need people who are going to buy for long term. No, no. I mean, I, I agree entirely. I mean, there's countless. I mean, you can go in almost any neighborhood, Bob, whether it's a, a poor neighborhood or a, a decent neighborhood or even some really nice neighborhoods, and there are – a number of homes empty for sale or for rent or for lease. And you got to wonder where those people are going. And it, it is almost impossible now to be able to go and, and get a loan anyways. And the loans that they're offering, you know, have a percent that's just out of whack and you're end up paying way more once you're done than the house is, you know, than it's market value. Well, I don't think the banks want to make those loans. And I think the government wants them to, and they keep on fiddling around <clears throat> so they don't have to. And I think that's a great part of it. I mean, how many, three or four or five programs they've had uh, helping people uh, stay in their homes or buy homes and lowering interest rates and down payments. And it hasn't worked. They simply overbuilt. Yeah, and... It's not just homes either. I mean, I've seen plenty of, like, uh, business outlets, uh, new uh, shopping malls uh, sitting empty. And they they continue to build and build, and it just makes you wonder, and as you brought this up a moment ago, why are they doing it? And where are they getting the money to do I mean, I think they're just they're getting loans themselves, and ultimately they're just going to drive themselves into debt, all these construction companies. Well, that's going to ha happen ultimately anyway. Over the last couple of years, there's been talks uh, in the Fed with banking and about consolidating the building industry, you know, down to three companies nationwide. And they love that because uh, they can control them all. Yeah, and it's getting closer and closer before the bottom falls out. And there are people that are actually out there saving their money that have seen the writing on the wall. But you now have the government officials. I came across this yesterday. I can't find it. But somebody in the government, I don't know wh who it was, which one of these clowns, they started telling people, don't save, start spending. Well, that's a good idea. If you got something to save. Yeah. Or something to spend. Yeah. Government saying is, go borrow some more money and spend. <laughs> that's what they're saying. Yeah, it's, it's anybody sad. who's got any money today that doesn't have it in gold and silver, coins, billion and shares, needs to have their heads examined. I mean, you should see the letters I get every day from people back 12, 15, 20 years ago who did what I told them to do. They avoided all the pitfalls and they made all the money. I mean, even recently, and we've had. Um, well, two producing uh, or uh, I would say middle of the middle of the road mining companies go up. I don't know, a hundred and well, I don't even know what the statistic is from six to seventeen or something like that, and the other one from four and a half to nineteen. I mean, it's a lot of money. And the it little is. old ladies are very happy <laughs> because they're the ones that listened and didn't get cheated. And uh, I saw one cash one stocks out yesterday uh, for $3 million. I said, she's in her 60s. And I says, pray tell, what are you going to do with all that money? And she says, oh, well, I got my, grand my mother to take care of and my daughter until she finds a man. So uh, I guess I can find good use for it. She, she, she says, but you're going to make me more, aren't you? I said, well, of course. 
Uh, but what Bernanke and the Fed have done in Europe and the United States guarantees that we're going to have this for at least three more years. Gold and silver are a lead pipe cinch. And if you don't own them, you're a jerk. You know, this is a chance of a lifetime. And look at what the money that's been made over the past 12 years. Incredible. It is. Gold is only, gold is only up $21 today. I know. It's, it's amazing that it's starting to go back up. And I kick myself for not buying more gold and silver, what, six years ago when it, the prices were much lower. I mean, I've always been an avid coin collector, but at that point, you know, I was buying some gold and some silver, but I bought into the whole uh, U.S. Mint scandal of buying those, you know, state quarters and <laughs> first state coin covers, thinking that they actually be worth something, but, you know, it was just a, a scam by the U.S. Mint, and I really wish I would have spent that money on buying gold and silver coins instead. No, that's wrong. And, uh, but that's just an interlude. In 1969, I bought my uh, first MS-64 Saint. Now, mind you, they didn't have ratings then, but the equivalent. I paid $47. I still got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That is amazing. How once you once you get past the the uh, shininess of the coins, you know the the change, the meaningless metal, uh, and start focusing on the more valuable metals like gold and silver, uh, even copper now. Copper is going up. Then you then you start seeing which coins are truly valuable and worth having, and which coins are basically junk. Well, ninety percent silver is junk, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the good kind of junk. I, I was referring to the, you know, coins that no longer have any silver in them. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I sincerely hope that there are plenty of people out there that were paying attention when the prices were much lower and they have been putting aside gold and silver. And as you also point out, it's important to uh, have storable freeze-dried food and, uh, you, know, you know, means of self-defense. So those are also important to have, too. Well, that's right. And uh, that's your uh, basics. And there's a lot of other things you can do, too. Um, I understand there's a new movie on I have not seen it because uh, I live in the jungle. But it's called The Prepares. And it's another word for the survivalists. And I understand it's quite good. So if you get a chance to take a look at it, take a look at it. That's Something I will definitely check out. Are you sure it's not the preppers? Because that's what they like to call themselves. Oh, it? maybe that's it. Yeah. You know, what do I know? <laughs> uh, you know a couple things, Bob. <laughs> one or, one <laughs> or two things. But, but definitely, I mean, that's one of, the, one of my interests on YouTube is watching all these different people out there that have learned on their own how to, how to prep, how to properly store food and water and all these things that you're going to need in a potential collapse or just to have for an emergency situation that most people don't even think about. They take it for granted. They think, well, if I need more toilet paper or, or more of this or more of that, I can just run down to the store. But what happens when it hits the fan and the stores are empty? See, people don't think about in that. One day. People need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one so day. I, they only have they only have normally uh, two and a half a day supply of food, and so um, that's not very much. So yeah, you got to be backing it up and stacking it away. Yeah, definitely. Even if the end of the world never comes, even if you know everything turns around and nothing happens, at least it's a good investment to have, and you can eventually eat that storable food and you know save you some money from having to go out and eat <laughs> the crap that they sell at restaurants. Bob, we got about a minute left. How can people get the International Forecaster? The forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. Published Wednesday and Saturday by email. Runs around 35 to 40 pages a time. Hard copy goes out twice a month for those who are not on the Internet. And everything you need to know every week is in that publication. You can get a free introductory copy by going to the internationalforecaster.com. The international f o r e c a s t e r dot com 
For those of you who would like to ask a question, and we do answer everyone, uh, for, for those of you who would like a copy, or for those of you who would like to get a copy of our latest report on gold and silver shares, email us. That address is Bob, B-O-B, at I-N-T, F-O-R-E, C-A-S-T-E-R dot com. Bob at Intforecaster dot com. And for those of you who would like to or have to, call toll free seven seven four seven nine eight one seven eight eight seven seven four seven nine eight one seven eight. You can get copies there. And for those of you who would like to become subscribers, that's the place to go because they're offering a special deal, and that deal is a free one-year subscription to the International Forecaster. So I think you should go there because it's a terrific deal. It absolutely is. Bob, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'll talk to you next week, sir. Gotcha.